Good evening, I'm Kimilia and this is Kini News. Hamza Zainuddin has questioned Anwar Ibrahim's announcement on the targeted diesel subsidy. In a statement, he said Anwar had failed to address the elephant in the room in his live telecast. Opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin has panned Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's announcement on the targeted diesel subsidy. In a statement yesterday, he said the announcement has caused unease among the people. Hamza said that Anwar, in his live telecast, failed to address the elephant in the room on the starting date for the blanket diesel subsidy removal in Peninsula Malaysia. He also questioned what is the government's mechanism to channel assistance to the people, when will the fuel price increase, and how can the people apply for assistance. He said that after many months, the government is still practicing the concept of announce first, think later. Hamza warned that fuel subsidy rationalization will have an impact on the entire economic chain at a time when people are already struggling with the rising cost of living. He also accused Anwar of confusing the people with figures that did not accurately present current economic realities. For example, he said while Anwar announced a 4.2% economic growth in the first quarter of this year, the figure is lower than 5.6% recorded in the same period last year. Earlier this week, Anwar said the government will end blanket subsidy for diesel with an expected savings of 4 billion ringgit, saying it was also benefiting the Mahakaya and over 3 million foreigners. However, he said the government will continue to subsidize diesel for 10 types of public transport and 23 types of vehicles used to transport goods to curb a sudden increase in prices of goods and services. Anwar, who is also finance minister, said the relevant ministry will soon announce implementation details for the targeted subsidy. Perlis Menteri Besar Mohamad Shukri Ramli's son has claimed trial to a charge of submitting false claims. The court allowed Mohamad Shafiq Mohamad Shukri bail at 20,000 ringgit with one surety. Mohamad Shafiq Mohamad Shukri, the son of Perlis Menteri Besar Mohamad Shukri Ramli, was charged in the Kangar Sessions Court today with submitting false claims of 19,505 ringgit. According to Bernama, Shafiq pleaded not guilty to the charge when it was read before Judge Nur Salha Hamza. He was charged with submitting a document, Pesanan Kerajaan, bracket, Bekalan Perkhidmatan, Kerajaan Negeri Perlis, containing a false claim to Nurul Nabila Mohamad Shukri, an administrative assistant at the District Administration Division, Perlis State Secretary's Office, on February 19th this year with an intent to deceive. Shafiq was alleged to have reasons to believe that the document for a claim amounting to 19,505 ringgit dated February 14, 2024, and in the name of Muhammad Farid Abdul Hamid, contained false details of the services provided for the Raja of Perlis Tuanku Syed Sirajuddin Jamalul Lail at the Tuanku Fauzia Hospital. The charge was framed under Section 18 of the MECC Act 2009. Shafiq could face punishment under Section 24 bracket 2 of the same law, which provides imprisonment for up to 20 years and a fine of not less than five times the amount or value of the bribe, or 10,000 ringgit, whichever is higher. The court allowed Shafiq bail at 20,000 ringgit with one surety. He was also ordered to report himself at the nearest MACC office once a month and surrender his passport to the court. The court set June 28th for mention for the submission of documents. Shafiq was remanded by the MACC on April 24, together with five other suspects, to help in investigations into the false claim case, but was released on bail on April 26. Six days later, the Munshi Basar was questioned by the MACC for eight hours regarding alleged power abuse involving infrastructure development projects in Perlis since 2022. Still on the topic, an UMNO leader has called on Shukri to resign as MB over the matter. Buat Zarkashi claimed such crimes could be committed because the state administration was weak and easily deceived. UMNO Supreme Council member Mohamed Puat Zarkashi has called for Perlis Menteri Besar Mohamed Shukri Ramli to resign. This came after it was reported that his son and former aide would be charged with submitting false claims of 600,000 ringgit. In a post on Facebook last night, Puat said such crimes could be committed because the state administration was weak and easily deceived. 
Puat claimed that Shukri's administration is weak and it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't the Munshi Basa. He said, fortunately, Perlis is a poor state and there are no mega projects that can be stolen from. He added that with a weak and easily deceived administration, Perlis will further decline. Puat also told PAS not to respond with a standard answer that Shukri did not resign as those accused have not been found guilty and it is not the Perlis MB who has been charged. He added that people should not be surprised as what is haram to others is halal to pass. Shukri is the Perikatan national lawmaker for the Sanglang seat in the Perlis Assembly. Today, his son, Shafiq, was charged in the Kangar Sessions Court with submitting false claims of more than 19,000 ringgit. The 35-year-old pleaded not guilty to the charge when it was read before Judge Nur Salha Hamza. Yesterday, MACC Chief Commissioner Azambaki said Shafiq, who owns a company, would be charged in Perlis and that the Munshi Basar's former political secretary would be charged in the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court. If you'd like access to news like this and more, subscribe now to Malaysia Kini and support independent media. Anthony Loke has responded to Wan Faisal over the MAHB deal. This came after he delivered a memorandum to the MOT in protest. Transport Minister Anthony Loke said the memorandum protesting the proposed Malaysia Airport's Holdings Berhad MAHB deal should have been sent to Kazana National Berhad. Loke said this when asked about the memorandum which was delivered by Machang MP Wanamat Faisal Wanamat Kamal today. Ya yeah, sebenarnya mereka salah pintu. Kalau nak hantar memorandum bantahan tak sepatutnya pergi ke Menteri Pangkutan. Sebab keputusan itu bukan di bawah Kementerian Pangkutan. Saya dah nyatakan dengan berbagai kali. So, saya rasa, saya rasa kesal lah. Ini ahli parlimen pun tak faham. Loke added that Wan Faisal should have gone to Kazana. Earlier today, about 30 anti-Israel activists, including Wan Faisal, demonstrated against the planned acquisition of MAHB at the Transport Ministry in Putrajaya. The protesters called the Palestine Solidarity Secretariat, SSP, submitted a memorandum of protest to a ministry representative demanding the government cancel the shareholding acquisition process. Earlier, the group had held a protest outside the MOT against the deal. They urged the government to call off the deal to defend the country's strategic assets. Around 30 anti-Israel activists, including politicians, demonstrated against the planned acquisition of Malaysia Airport's holdings Berhad MAHB at the Transport Ministry in Putrajaya this morning. The demonstration, which included Machang MP Wanamat Faisal Wanamat Kamal, was held to protest the purported acquisition by a consortium with Zionist links. The group called the Palestine Solidarity Secretariat, submitted a memorandum of protest to a ministry representative demanding the government cancel the shareholding acquisition process. One Faisal said the government should not attack the opposition for opposing the project, but understand that Malaysians are opposed to the sale of MAHB shares. He said the government has forgotten that it is not only the opposition, but Malaysians are objecting to the sale of shares. Wan Faisal also asked whether the government was pressured into greenlighting the acquisition by the United States following a visit by the country's officials to Malaysia recently. On May 15, Gateway Development Alliance and its shareholders announced a preconditional voluntary offer to acquire all the shares in MAHB not yet owned by the consortium at an offer price of 11 ringgit a share. The consortium is led by two government-linked investment companies, Kazana, through its wholly owned unit UEM Group Berhad and the Employees Provident Fund. The consortium's shareholders also comprise a wholly owned subsidiary of the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority and funds managed by Global Infrastructure Partners. GIP is wholly owned by BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager and is connected to Lockheed Martin, a company that supplies arms used against Palestinians. Last week, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim dismissed reports claiming that 25% of MAHB shares would be acquired by a pro-Zionist foreign company. Calling the claims baseless, he accused the opposition of trying to incite the public against the government by making the allegation. Anwar has explained and defended the meeting he had with Hamas leaders in Qatar. He said the meeting was held to try to secure a peaceful resolution to the Israel-Palestine conflict. 
Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has defended his meeting with Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Qatar earlier this month, speaking at a question and answer session at the Future of Asia, Nikkei's flagship annual conference in Tokyo, Japan. Anwar said they have been friends for decades, so there was no reason they should not meet. He reiterated that his meeting with Ismail was to persuade them for a peaceful solution to the Gaza conflict. The Premier explained that during the meeting, he pleaded to Ismail to abide by calls for conciliation, accept the two-state solution to resolve the Israel-Palestine conflict and the swapping of prisoners. Anwar added that he appealed because he had an advantage, which is that he knew them and they considered him a friend. The Prime Minister said that as a friend, he is obligated to try and get a peaceful solution to the Israel-Palestine conflict. He said it was crucial to view the situation in Gaza as an unprecedented humanitarian crisis. With this, Anwar asked if we can allow or close an eye to such cruelty from happening, regardless of one's ideology or ties with other countries. He said the October 7th attack launched by Hamas, which is used as the reason for the ongoing war in Gaza, can never erase the seven decades of oppression against Palestine, and this is why Malaysia advocates for a two-state solution to the conflict. Anwar also urged for the increase of humanitarian aid to those affected by the war. That is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.